national championship match with an overall record of 31 and 4 under the direction of head coach John Cook. Also joining us are student athletes Kelly Hunter, Sydney Townsend, and Annika Albright. We'll start with opening comments from Coach Cook, followed by questions for our student athletes, and then the student athletes will be dismissed, and we'll open up questions for Coach Cook. So, Coach, uh, opening thoughts. Well, I like the NCAA because we stay hydrated because there's always water everywhere we go. So, thank you for that. Worried about your health. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, we got a chance to have a good practice today uh, after a busy morning with a banquet, and uh, uh, we're excited to play tomorrow. Should be a great match. And uh, that's about it. All right. As a reminder, please identify yourself uh, with your media affiliation as well. So we'll open up questions for our student athletes. All right. Right up here on the right front. I'll go. Lee Feinswalk from volleyballmag.com. For all three of you, if it applies, and I know, Annika, it especially applies to you, how, how Tyler has helped you as an individual player. And if you would just talk about it and maybe give me some examples. Yeah, uh, Tyler is really enthusiastic. Um, he's really positive all the time, and he brings a lot of energy into the gym. Um, and he's just really knowledgeable about the sport. He knows a lot. He brought a lot in from the men's side. He brought in a lot from the beach. And um, I think he just helped us bring in different things into Nebraska volleyball. Um, I think Coach already had a lot of things, and all the former uh, coaches had already set a really good, strong platform, and then he just helped build it up um, with a bunch of different ways. For example, he's helped me out a lot with my shots. I know people know um, just like opening up different shots that maybe we're not used to in the women's sport yet, but in the men's sport it, or in the men's side, it is a little bit more common. Um, so that's just one example of how he's helped me personally. Thank you. I don't know, if he's, Sydney, if he's helped you. If he uh, hasn't, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, I figure you're as a setter, he must have, yeah. Yeah. Um, Tyler with me has just been helping me a lot with confidence and kind of like the mentality behind the game and like reading the pass, reading the set and kind of predicting what's going on with each play. Yeah, just as Ani said, he brings in a lot from the men's game and um, before season started, the only film we were watching was all international, mostly men's and uh, just seeing the different techniques, it's, it's a lot different than anything I've learned in my entire life and anything most girls do learn. So. Um, yeah, we basically didn't change my technique, but added some new things in here and there, some little tweaks. And um, he's just always on video. And like Ani said, he knows the sport better than anyone that I've ever seen. So um, he's just helped kind of to exp um, show us new things that we didn't know before. All right, right here in front. Third row. Third row, sorry. Uh, Brent Wagner from the Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, Kelly, what uh, what prompted you to send out your first tweet this morning and uh, sometime? Yeah, I mean, there were so many cool pictures that came out, and um, I don't know. We all want to post basically every single one, but I don't know. For something, for some reason, that, that picture, we were all in such a tight huddle, and you could see the logo for the championships, and I just thought it was a good picture. But like I said in my tweet, I love this team, and this has been probably my favorite year since I've been here of my five. So, um People liked it, loved it, and um, it's just one of those great pictures that you'll never forget. What do you love about this team this year? I think it's just the fact that we all love each other and are playing for each other, and we're working hard on getting better every single day. And um, we just have this mentality that I've never had on a team that I've been on, and it's just so freeing to play with this group. And um, we know that we all have each other's backs, and no matter what happens, we're in it together. And if we lose a point, we're moving on. If we win the point, we're moving on. And it's just really been kind of a freeing year for me and I think everyone else as well. Okay, right here in the front, and then we'll come across the aisle. Don Patterson from Volleyball USA. And Kelly, what are one or two things that you do differently as a setter than you did two years ago when you won this tournament? Yeah, we talk a lot about just posture, and that's your starting position. And we talk about using the ground and um, kind of gaining your power from that rather than just using your hands. So um, it keeps you more consistent. And um, if you're doing the same thing every single time, you don't really have to rely on your hands as much. So there's a lot of room for air up there. So I would say using the ground and posture and then just overall confidence and um, just trusting your ability to throw the ball around and throw in a, a play that you don't normally make and um, just seeing that work has been really rewarding this year. Okay, right here. 
Jeff Sheldon with the Omaha World Herald for Ani and Sydney. Kelly sort of, I feel like, touched on it a little bit a couple minutes ago, but you two have both played in three straight Final Fours now. What is it about this one and this team that, that makes it so special? Um, I guess for this one, uh, this team this year is just super tight. And like Bree said yesterday, we just we like to hang out with each other off the court as well as on the court. And we kind of stay relaxed and have fun. And in the huddles, we always are really good about moving on to the next play and taking a deep breath. And you can just tell everyone really cares about each other. Yeah, I mean, I think they've nailed it. But um, just the, the vibe that our team has is different than it has been in my four years. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's something special about each and every one of these girls, and I think we've all really put our heart and soul into this team, and I think it's showing. Okay. Kelly, go ahead, Edwards from Channel 8 and Lincoln. You weren't able to play in the second match of the year against Florida. Um, how difficult was that for you to not be able to start the season, um, especially your senior season? And um, you guys lost in five sets that match. How have you guys changed since then and gotten better and also the difficulty of not playing and starting there? Yeah, I think for anyone not playing is kind of a tough pill to swallow, but just watching my team compete, it was a different perspective and I got to kind of see how the team was working and what it looks like from the outside because it's always different than what you feel on the inside. So, um, but it was, it was a blast to cheer them on and come up with cheers and stuff like that and just kind of pumping up my team in a different way. But the biggest thing that we got out of that first weekend is just knowing that we were a team that could be great. We were right there, right at the beginning. Um, for first two matches of the year, being pretty close to winning some of those games was big for us. And like I said, the biggest thing we learned is that we could go far. And um, we took that as a learning experience rather than getting defeated. And um, we came out strong. And we opened up the Big Ten great. And we just kind of showed people the team that we thought we could be. Jane, right here on the aisle towards back. Kevin Suits, KOLN. Sydney, how long did it take you guys to get past the euphoria of last night of beating Penn State and then moving on and realizing there's one more highly important game staring you in the face? Um, I guess we were pretty excited. Uh, for me, I had to go do drug testing right away, so I don't really know how long it took the team to get over it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. She was there for a while. Yeah, it took me a while. Um, <laughs> But I know, like, before we went to bed last night, we did meditation to kind of calm ourselves and refocus and work on our breathing again. So before bed, we were ready to go for today. Yeah. Up front on the right, on the aisle. For the players, does it mean anything in particular to you three to have the chance to be the first class that's ever won two national championships at Nebraska? An Anika, do you want to start on that end and work in? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that'd be incredible. Um, I think our class has something really special. Um, and Brie included, she was on our team in 15. And um, I wouldn't want to go through it with anyone else. And Allie joining this year has been really cool to our senior class. And I think we bring a lot of um, different things to this team. And so I think it'd be really special. And I'd love to do it with um, Fecky and Kenzie again. You know, they've been with us too, and they'd have to as well. And the new freshman class, they've come in, they've worked hard. Coach always says they float our boat. and. Um, so to have another national championship um, and show those freshmen and the sophomores um, what it's like would be awesome and to have two of our own. Um, Kelly and I were just talking about it the other day. It'd be pretty cool to have uh, four rings, two national championships and two Big Tens. <laughs> All right, any final questions for our student athletes? Okay, right here on the right. Kelly, what are the things that have energized you about this season? Uh, I think just like we have been talking about day in and day out, it's just this group is so eager to get better. And um, we've gone into the gym every single day. And I don't think we've really had a day where we weren't working our butts off and um, trying to get better. There's been something new we're working on every week, every day, every match. And I think it's really cool for us being seniors to still try and uh, change our game and get better because you know, it could be close to the end of our careers and people might not want to change, but just the new stuff that we've added on has been so fun. And just like I said, our mentality and our general vibe out there is just something that I've really never experienced as an athlete. And it really is one of the most special feelings. Okay, one final question in the back. For each of you guys, um, to start out the season, not a lot of people maybe predicted that you guys could make it this far to the national championship. And you guys have talked about having a chip on your shoulder and 
be in the not one of the top four seeds. So I guess how rewarding has this journey been in this season? And I know you've alluded to it a little bit, Kelly, but for each of you guys, just how rewarding has this been? Kelly, you want to start in the middle and work out? Yeah, I think um, just proving people wrong is obviously a great feeling just from the beginning of the season. Um, we knew that people were talking about how this would be a rebuilding year or something like that, and we just took that as motivation. And um, we've used that every single day, and I think we've talked about it week in and week out. And um, that's something that our team has been thinking about is how we need to get better and how we can prove people wrong. And I think now we're just doing it for ourselves. It doesn't really matter what anyone else says, what, what seed they think we should be, but we're just doing it for this group of people that we have here right now. Yeah, I would say this summer we really worked on like our relationships with each other and just kind of getting to know each other on a deeper level. So I think we really focused on that with each other, for each other throughout this year, and that's what brought us this far. Yeah, I just think uh, it's rewarding because we started this season and we said we weren't going to dream too big, but we still we were dreaming big, and so we worked really hard, and I think we all expected, or we knew we had the talent to get here, and we had the teamwork to get here, and we worked so hard for it, and so it's definitely cool to see all of that pay off, all, everything that we've done this year. Great. Thank you, Kelly, Sydney, and Annika. You can head back to the locker room, and as a reminder, the locker room is open to uh, for any additional interviews with student-athletes that aren't up here with us right now. All right, we'll open up questions for Coach Cook right here in the front. John, would you say you have a, a go-to hitter on this team or not? I mean, on one hand, you, you look at Penn State, they have Lee, and you look at uh, Stanford, and they have Plummer, and it seems like you guys spread it around a little more, but Fecky had 54 swings the other night, so maybe she is. What, how would you sort of... I think right Kelly side. thinks she can set anybody at any given time in the match, and that's the way we built this team is to be a really balanced team and, and also have Kelly, you know, be an attacker. And you know, we won the match on a, the point last night with her attacking. So, you, you know, one of the reasons Michaela gets more sets sometimes, sometimes she doesn't, but she starts at left front. Last night, at least she did. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of long rallies. So out of system, you know, they're going to get a lot of sets. But... When we're controlling the ball, we're, we're trying to be balanced. Okay, right here. And I think, you know, the, the Colorado coach, uh, you know, he said it best. He goes, you know, it, Nebraska is really hard to defend because everybody has averaging over two kills a game. So how do you defend that? And I think that was a really big compliment. And it takes a player like Kelly to be able to run that because most setters are going to say, okay, I'm going to set my favorite hitter or somebody I think is going to make me look good. Kelly, has, she's a master at running a balanced attack. She has her whole career. It just, it's a gift that setters have. Uh, the great setters have that. They just know they have a feel. Every time you look at the stats, wow, look how balanced we are. And um, she, she's, she's one of the best we've had. John, has this team run out of ways to surprise you at this point? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not, not with Kelly Hunter. So... She's got something every day she's working me on. So uh, 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 she's, you know, she sent a picture. So I don't know if you guys, like, was the latest. She sent a picture. So I did a picture with them in front of the Christmas tree. Of course, then she took that picture of me, and, and she u used that in other pictures so of me laying down. So they just, you know, I get these things on my, my, uh, my our group chat. So... Today it was uh, Kevin Hamley telling him good luck. That was a big deal today. So at the All American Banquet. So there's always something going with these guys. It never ends. That's what you know. You guys hear him talk about it. They're they're a cool group. Another another way that uh, you know, I I've, when you tell a team's close, like we in practice, you guys have been around. How, how often do you have to wait around? I mean, they sit in there and stretch forever and talk. They, and I was like, okay, you guys, we got to go. Okay, you got to get to the training table. You got to go to class. You know, they just they don't want to leave, and uh, I think it's a sign of a really close team. In the back, Holly Rowe, ESPN. Coach, I have this very vivid memory of the last time you played Florida, and you had every excuse. You know, your your setters out, first couple of matches of the season, but you slammed your notebook down on the table, and you were so upset with that performance. As I just wanted you to walk us through 
your thoughts after what you saw that weekend and, and then how that started to move and grow into what we see now. Okay, well, slam is a very powerful world. And it, the table shook. I will stand I, by I, my I verb. set it down on the table. Maybe I misjudged it, the height of the table. <laughs> Maybe you had your microphones turned up too loud. Because um, we were right there. And uh, I felt that we had a chance to win that. We backed off. And, um, um, you know, I try not to get upset with our team, but sometimes you have to show fire when, you know, they didn't take advantage of their opportunity and go for it. And uh, we backed off a little bit when it mattered. And so I was, I don't remember that, but I'll take your word for it. But they needed to know that, you know, we're competing here and you compete and you go for it. We'll go over to this side and then come back. Nicole Cousins, KLKN. Uh, Coach, I just wanted to talk with you about Brianna Holman. In 2015, when you guys won the national championship, she was on the bench as a transfer. What was that like, and how was it having her on the court this year? Well, that was, uh, you know, Kelly redshirted, Brianna redshirted, um, uh, Christina Hotelling redshirted, Nancy Metcalf redshirted. I mean, we've had some great players redshirt. And uh, Bree, of course, was forced to. And I see in those years, they really grow and mature, and they have a greater appreciation for the game. And so because of that experience for Brianna, I think she really appreciates every day, every big match, uh, every practice, you know. And, and I think they learn a lot by watching. And like Kelly said, you know, um, she alluded to that, uh, you know, just the, when she was out at Florida, you know, hey, I learned the cheers, I learned all this stuff, I, you know. I'm not just a starter and never do that thing, those things. And uh, so I think for Brianna, it brought a maturity and a, an appreciation and a, will, a, a great desire to be great. And uh, I've seen that every day from her. We'll come up here in front. Yeah, Co Coach Vicki Friedman with ESPN. Um, given the nature of how each team plays in Florida's defense and how you guys play, uh, are we, can we expect, do you think, a lot of long rallies tomorrow night? I think when you get to these matches, yeah, it's going to be long rallies. It's hard to put the ball away, um, and uh, the block's good, and th there's good hitters, and they're going to make some nice kills, but there's going to be long rallies, and we talk about that all the time with our team. You know, we, we talked about in practice today, we're going to have to win some long rallies, and, you know, other people are going to have to set the ball besides Kelly, and we're going to have to put it in a position where we can try to score. But this time of year, the, the effort is tremendous on, on the – on the court, and uh, that's what wheels balls up and keeps them up off the ground. You all went against a pretty big block last night with Penn State. Florida, again, presents a lot of size. How have you conditioned your hitters to, to approach attacking against a, a pretty big, well-formed block? Yeah, so, Jeff, we, we've talked about this. We, we train to play the more big physical teams in our gym because we, we see so many in the Big Ten, Michigan State, Penn State, uh, Minnesota last year was – a huge block. Um, so we, in, you know, that's something you just can't go into a match and say, okay, the block's bigger and, you know, we're going to keep doing the same things. So we always prepare for the, the bigger blocks and that's how we train every day. So for us, the block's our friend. We want to use it. And uh, that's part of being a great outside hitter. Sometimes there's, you know, uh, there's bigger blockers up there. It allows our hitters to have more arms and elbows to hit off of as opposed to a smaller block. Back in the back corner. Lee from volleyballmag.com. John, I, besides the fact that you had an opening, why did you hire Tyler? Um, well, I, I tried to hire Tyler two years ago, or maybe three years ago now, and he was uh, working with Long Beach in the USA Olympics with the beach team and the USA men, and Chris was still playing overseas. So we talked, we had a conversation. The reason I, the way I heard about Tyler was my brother's nephew, or my, my brother's son played uh, for Tyler in his club. And he, my brother called me and told me, uh, he works for Adidas Golf in Northern California. And my brother called me and said, John, there's this coach. I said, he ran the best practice I've ever seen. I said, oh, who is it? And uh, he told me the name. So I filed that away, we tried, but it didn't work out. And then when I had all the openings this year, or last spring, um, I called Tyler again, and I think they were in a better position to 
go kind of go to the next part of their life. Tyler made a decision to go into the women's game from the men's game. Chris was retiring, wanted to start a family. She's got a baby here. And uh, I think the fact that it was Nebraska, and I, there was something I didn't know in all this, was that Tyler was in Omaha in 2006. And apparently he said, told Chris, he goes, someday I'm going to coach at Nebraska. And because um, he was so impressed with the Final Four there and the crowd. And, uh, but the main reason I hired Tyler, because of what you, you just heard these girls say, is he makes me a better coach. And I wanted, I wanted to be pushed and challenged and see things differently. And after interviewing him, when he came in on his uh, interview, we were in, sand, in our sand season, our beach season, and I just said, hey, Totter, here's the team, run a practice, I'm going to watch. And at the end of that practice, I, I knew this guy's going to make me better. Can you give me an example of some, something that this year that you, you see a direct benefit, like a specific incident, play, sequence, anything? Um, there's, there's, uh, it's just, it's kind of a overall how we play, how we train. We do some new drills. Uh, Tyler sees the game differently than I do, it kind of coming from the men's game. I think the women's game is going more like the men's game. I mean, look at the size of the players, the height of the net. So, uh, just some of the things we do, probably the, the easiest thing is just, I, I see what he's, I've let him train Kelly. Uh, I still train Kelly some, but I've let him add to what she's doing. I mean, she's had me for four years, and I thought, okay, he, he, he's one of the greatest setters ever. He could, there's got to be something he can give her, and I think he's made her a better setter. And she talked about it, using the ground. I mean, I've never talked about that before, and posture and things like that. So just, it's just a, a new way of looking at things, and uh, I think he's, um, he's, a, he's a great young coach. In the middle. John, you told Kelly uh, like a year ago that she had to be better this year. What did she have to be better at, and did that happen? She, um, <clears throat> so losing Katie and Amber, I mean, you, you can be a good setter, and they're still going to put the ball away. I knew this year she would have to be a great setter because we lost those two hitters and Annie Malloy. Uh, so I knew we'd have young hitters. Ani needs a really good set. Uh, Jazz is going to need good sets, so I knew that she would have to be a better setter on the court. She would have to understand the game better. She would also have to be a better leader. And, um, you know, we talked about Carlini, what she did at Wisconsin. We talked about uh, some of the setters at Nebraska, what they did. And I just told her, you know, uh, and, and the analogy I use is like Usain Bolt. Okay, he, he, he broke the world record, and if he breaks it again, it's going to be by a hundredth or two hundredth of a second. Kelly, and we may not be able to see every day, like, hey, she's better, but there has to be small increments in how much better it is. And maybe it's one set of a practice that she was better on than she was the day before, but we've got to continue to build on that, and she, she had to take it to another level. And I think she's done that with her serving, her blocking, her setting, her defense, everything. So... It's hard to do because you know you don't you're not seeing the improvement all the time and and uh, I, I also think her being out really gave her a sense of urgency. We'll come up here on the left in the front and then come back over the aisle. Uh, Coach, you've got Husker Nation b behind you, but there's something to be said for going up against a sentimental favorite like Mary Wise. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, Mary's cost me uh, several Final Fours, so I don't have any sympathy for Ma Mary. If you'd like to go back 1997. Uh, at Wisconsin, she knocked us out in, the, in five games. Um, she knocked us out of a big tournament uh, back in 2010, I think. And I mean, and she beat us, she's beaten us a lot. So there's no sympathy for Mary. Um, but, uh, you know, she's one of the great coaches in the game. She's obviously done a great job at Florida and uh, has been, uh, and I had to verify that she was not older than me. We're, we're very close in age because she was saying I, she was the third youngest coach here. Um, but uh, she started coaching right out of college. And I started coaching football right out of college. And uh, so we were comparing stories the other night at the banquet. But uh, we certainly have a lot of respect. But they, they've, paid, they've, they've uh, punished my team several times. So I'm looking forward to it. Final question here in front. 
All right, any final questions for Coach? Oh, there you go. John, did you, you sense your team was fatigued after a three-hour match last night? Well, I, yeah, both those teams played really hard last night, and uh, that's why recovery is so important. It's something we've been working on uh, as a part of our program, and we have people that help us with our recovery and performance. You heard them talk about their, they meditated last night just to calm down and go to sleep because they needed a good night's sleep. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're all about recovery. They're, they're doing recovery right now. So, uh, but one thing about playing in the Big Ten, we're used to this. You're used to playing a Penn State and then turn around playing, you know, another great team the next night. Or you're playing Minnesota, Wisconsin back to back. I mean, this is part of the deal of being in the Big Ten. And uh, it's something that it helps prepare us. All right. Thank you, Coach. And, okay. Uh, best of luck. Arthur Bryan or Gates Barbecue? What's what's the number go. one so far for you guys? Arthur, Arthur Bryan's. Okay. Kansas, Oklahoma Joe's, Kansas City Joe's isn't in the conversation. Uh, it's pretty Joe's good. Joe's Kansas yeah. City is my favorite. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> but uh, those are the legendary ones. Uh, Three-seat old basketball coaches.